this is a process that can be done on site. So large plantations, large brick homes, often the bricks would be made right on site out of local material. So whatever clay was locally available, taken out of the ground and mixed with just water. All we're doing is mixing water with clay, mud, so we can finish closing in that oven so we can fire. This is also the same stuff that we'll make the bricks out of. Just kneading the clay. Yeah. Okay. This is what they used to do back in the day. They would have had women and children until it gets the right consistency, something like a stiff dough, uh, that is then thrown into wooden molds to, to shape the bricks. So you get it into sort of a brick-like shape, and then roll it in the sand. These are sand-struck bricks. The striking method uh, sort of describes how they're uh, release the type of lubricant used. So these are lubricated with sand. So when they come out, they're coming out because there's this layer of sand going all around. So now I'm gonna strike it, take off the extra, and put our handy dandy Lebanon stamp right on there. Ta da! <coughs> <laughs> These are some good looking bricks. And then the bricks are allowed to dry in the sun, in the air for several days or several weeks or several months, producing, I mean, in, in some cases, 2,000 bricks a day. And you're doing that for weeks and months, you're going to pile up a lot of bricks. And once all the bricks for the project had been made, all the bricks would then be collected together and built into what's called a clamp or a kiln all stacked up and you can sort of see a smaller one we've got in the back um, usually about 10 feet tall 10 feet wide they can be 30 50 90 feet long depending on how many bricks they're trying to fire from start to finish um, it takes about a week of firing the bricks 24 hours a day with wood fires very slowly but gradually building the heat until the bricks look like they were done that's about a 2,000 degree heat. When we start the firing, you have to start it really, really low to give the bricks a chance to dry and sort of push that last little bit of water out. And that, that can take a day or more, 24 hours straight. And then beyond that, it's working the heat up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, until, until the bricks look like they're done. You look for the color they're glowing, uh, how much smoke and how much fire is coming out of the top. Uh, you can see glowing bricks from bottom to top of the stacks. So you just look at those signs to figure out when you're done. 2,000 degrees, and that's not judged with any sort of measuring devices, thermometers. That's just the experience of the brick maker knowing what 2,000 degrees bricks should look like when they're at that heat. Color comes from the iron and or the other minerals in the clay and how they're affected by the heat and the temperature ranges in the kiln as they're fired. So we get lots of different heat colors because of the heat. It's something, the product of the clay made it fairly unique. It's not something you're going to see really anywhere else because of just the geology and how the clay layers are formed in this, this part of the country just gave you a different, different look to the brick. Post-Civil War you get into a lot more industrialization and a lot more well, transportation allows product to start moving longer distances. You can get in more regular, more uniform, factory-made brick, much more consistent product. And the sort of traditional handmade bricks just kind of fall out of favor because what's coming in is better looking, more consistent, probably cheaper than what would have been locally available. It is very conceivable that this might be the first bake in over a hundred years. It's a Savannah gray brick. It's, it's really a, a, it's part of the culture of the city.
back in the 20s and 30s when Savannah was kind of the houses were going down and they were selling a lot of the row houses, they would sell the brick, Savannah Gray brick, for a lot of money. 